All right. Shade mechanics. Let's talk about some of them. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video on the shorter side. I find that it's easier to digest information if it's to the point. Um, so I'm going to talk about three things mostly. Um, they all have to do with our shade skills. Uh, we're going to talk about some ideas on positioning. We're going to talk about where our damage comes from, where the majority of our damage comes from. Uh, and we're going to talk about some ways to abuse these skills and get the most out of them. Um, so let's talk about positioning first. So the first thing you want to know is what we want to be doing when we're going into battle. When it comes to shades, there's a couple things we can be doing. Um, we can drop a shade directly on top of ourselves and primarily use our F3, which gives us barrier. So that's going to be giving barrier to allies. That's going to be really helpful for charging into battle. We can drop a shade on enemies. What this is going to do is it's going to boon strip and it's going to apply burst. Um, primarily with F1. That's our nice spam skill. Super low cooldown on that. What we're really going to be looking to do though is probably both. Um, so in situations like this it's, it's really nice to drop a shade in an enemy and then push into it. That way by the time you're here and you're on top of the enemy, all your shade skills, you can get some life force here, all your shade skills are going off on enemies and on allies. Um, that being said, there are definitely going to be situations where you might want to be dropping a shade skill on top of yourself, and then immediately afterwards on top of the enemies and pushing into it. Um, but we can talk about that combo a little bit later. We'll also note that the shade does have... Let me get out of range here, that's annoying. We'll also note that the shade does also have three charges, which means it's really easy to move around the battlefield. And it's on a 10 second recharge. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to move this thing. It does last for 20 seconds, so it will stay put for a pretty long time if you need it to. Um, but if situations call for it, definitely do not be afraid to move it. Um, so that pretty much covers positioning. We're gonna, again, we're going to talk about some specific combos a little bit later. Uh, but let's move on to damage. Um, so the way damage works is... Or the way most of the damage works, I should say, is it comes from our shade skill. So if we read it, it says, Whenever you use a shade ability, you and your shand shand shades, can't talk today. Sand shades strike nearby enemies. So every time you use any one of these abilities... You have two, a three, a four, or five. You're gonna be casting burning, flat damage, cripple, torment, and if you spec into it, uh, vulnerability. Our build doesn't run this because the life force from Soul Marks is critical, but unyielding blast has the same mechanic that the rest of these do. You also note that it originates from yourself as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so. There's a couple uh, couple different ways to abuse this. Like I said, it, it pretty much gives us flexibility. So we have the flexibility of using shade skills just for their benefits, whether you're using it for allies, whether you're using it for condition cleanse and boon strip, or for a fear. Um, it also lets you use it just for burst, for the damage portion of it. Or, again, if you're bursting on top of where you're standing, a little both which is pretty nice. Um, so that's where actually most of our damage is going to be coming from. Um, staff marks do a pretty good amount of damage. Our utilities do a pretty good amount of damage. Uh, Scepter Warhorn. It's alright. We mostly have this for life force generation. But I would say probably 70% of our damage is going to be coming from shade skills. So it's, it's imperative to know how that works. So you can get the most out of it. So the last thing we're talking about is cast times. So cast times is what I was mentioning earlier of where we can start finding ways to abuse these skills. There's a couple different ways we can do that. Um, so number one, we can achieve really high burst on targets by activating all of these skills at once. So you'll notice if when I put a shade down, I can literally cast all those at the same time. And I'm now ticking for a lot of damage 
for pretty much doing nothing. And again, remember that that originates for myself as well. So if I was standing on top of this guy, let me get some more life force again here. Or in a more practical scenario, if I was standing on top of a group of enemies, because this will hit five people in a pretty good range, radius I should say. What we can do is you can pop the shade down. And again, all of those can go off at the same time. I detargeted here. I just want to see how much or how high that torment stacks. So I'm gonna wait for this cooldown. Let's try that one one more time. And we're gonna watch what that torment number goes to. Because for doing relatively nothing, it's so 13, 17, 18. I think that capped at 18. 18 stacks of torment for doing pretty much nothing in an almost instant amount of time. And that's not including the bleeding we applied, that's not including the burning we applied, or the base damage we did. That's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. So another thing that lets us do is... Let me get out of range here. I keep forgetting about the staff auto. So another thing that lets us do is pull off some nice combos. Um, so one of the things we might want to be looking to do as we're initiating is giving barriers to allies and boon stripping enemies pretty much at the same time. So let me show you what this combo kind of looks like. So it's going to start off, the, the combo looks like shade F1, shade F3, shade F1 on enemies, shade F2. So we'll do it in slow motion here. So shade F1, we're going to put the shade down on top of ourselves and where our allies are standing. And we're going to shade F3. So that's going to be giving a nice chunk of barrier out to start the fight. After the barrier goes off, we're going to reposition, shade F1, and then into shade F2. And you can be doing other stuff during that because, again, these don't have cast times. But that's kind of the core combo. So at speed, that actually comes out pretty quick. Quick enough to to be using that as we're running up to people which is pretty nice the only thing you want to be careful of is you want to make sure the shade animation actually goes off before you use one of the abilities because you'll notice this shade f1 is the only one of these that does have a cast time it's half a second so it's pretty short uh, but you can actually miss a proc let's see if we can do it here yeah if you do it too early it's not going to go off on there. Um, what that also, what the cast times also allows to do is multitask stuff. So what we can do is if I, if I put a shade down here, I can be casting marks and casting shade skills at the same time, which is nice. Or let me get some more life force here. Generating life force on a single target without any other enemies around is not a fun process. Yeah, it could actually probably be. Now you know, I'll just do it this way. So if I'm running up and I want to cast my heal skill, I can get shade skills off in the middle of that. Or if I'm trying to throw a plague lance down, I can throw shade skills off in the middle of that. So you can sneak these in to pretty much anything with a cast time, um, which is nice. So what that turns into. Um, and this is where, at least on the preview weekend, there was a pretty stark difference between um, what some people were doing and I think what some people weren't. Is that you should almost, these should almost always be on cooldown. There's no reason for these to not be on cooldown, unless you don't have any life force. Remember the ABCs of playing Scourge. Always be casting. Um, so it's really easy to constantly be doing these things pretty much all the time. Like I said, those those pretty much always have to be on cooldown. And if if you're doing it right, it'll take some practice to, to get into because again, you have to be multitasking a lot of stuff at the same time, watching the cooldown of these. But if you're doing it right, your damage numbers are gonna be insane. Your boon strip numbers are gonna be insane. Your condition cleanse numbers are gonna be insane. Your barrier application numbers are going to be insane. Pretty much everything your class looks to do is going to be insane. The flip side of that is that if you're... If you're not maxing out the use of these shade skills... 
all four of those categories are going to be severely lacking. It'll take practice, but we'll get there. This was Nazla. If you guys have any questions on any Scourge mechanics in the future, don't be afraid to let me know. I am going to be putting out a couple more videos on a couple other specific mechanics. Um, primarily some Sandswell uses, because this is actually a super versatile skill, and Plague Lands uses. I'm just kind of getting some concrete ideas of where are good places to Plague Lands, where are bad places to Plague Lands. But those are topics for a different video. Until next time, this was Nazlo. Thanks for watching, guys.